Hey, how are you guys? Coming up next, we're going to take a look at how you can make some of the most beautiful Korean flavors in the comfort of your home. We're doing a Korean-inspired pork and noodle bowl. Lots of fresh flavors going into this. Not a whole lot of fancy schmancy, guys, but lots of flavor. So check out the recipe at kcknh.com. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And be sure to like, subscribe, and share. So we're taking a little trip to the flavors that you find in South Korea. And I have to tell you, this is definitely my most favorite. All the noodle soups, the different types of kimchi, the hot spicy noodle bowls themselves, the banchan that you can experience when you're dining out. And then you can't deny the awesomeness of a Korean barbecue. That's some serious sizzling fun right there, guys. So we're going to get started with the marinade. Now in the ingredient list, there's going to be a separate disclaimer because as we make this, we're actually going to stop adding ingredients to this because we're going to take a portion of this as a reserve batch for some vegetables. We're going to do a, a gentle pickle on. So in the bowl, we got some tamari. We're working on rice vinegar. The nice part about this is guys, it's very easy to find the ingredients. You don't need anything like a second language to find out what this product is or what that item is. We're using simple ingredients to bring forth beautiful Korean-like flavors. Now, I always do a ginger garlic puree 50-50. I use it all the time. So it just makes it easy for something like this that we can put together in this marinade. Now we're using white pepper, not black pepper. Uh, very significant with Asian dishes. The white pepper has a unique floral note to it and it really does make a difference. So we've got everything in here except for a couple of ingredients and that's okay because we got to whisk the hell out of this. We got to break down that honey and right away we've got a small container I'm going to reserve four ounces of this. Uh, this is going to go towards some of the pickle that I mentioned earlier. The bowl we're going to set aside. That's going to be towards the pork that eventually we're going to be cutting and sticking it into the bowl to marinade. So for the pickle, it's very similar to a kimchi called oimuchin. Uh, just a few separate ingredients were left out only because it can be kind of spicy. This one I kept gentle because I didn't want to hurt my husband. <laughs> so with a cucumber we've removed the seeds and the flesh from the middle and we're going to take this down to a small dice. Uh, we got to consider the sizing of everything that we're going to be working with including the pickle because you don't want this flooding out your noodle bowl. That would be nasty to be truthful with you. So we're just going to do gentle dicing on this nice and small we have a separate container we're going to compile everything now with this we also want to put in carrot that's going to add natural sweetness to this and a hey, color you can't go wrong with color right you just want to make sure your knife cuts are thin uh, just be careful with your fingers and again just like the cucumber we're going to put the carrots in together they got to share rent space, guys. And for a little bit of greenage, I always like to add either fresh mint. I can add in basil. Thai basil actually works nice in this. Uh, but I'm also going to eventually put in some scallions. So right into that container, we put that reserved marinade in. And now I'm going to take some scallions, chop off the ends here. And we're just going to go for a typical dice. It doesn't have to be small, doesn't have to be perfect, but I do like the nice gardeny taste this gives. So we're going to put all of that into the same container with a sealable lid. And the goal is to have this sit and marinate itself. You can keep it on the counter for like 30 minutes if you want, or just stick it in the fridge and let it do its beautiful thing. So we're gonna set that aside and go back to our bowl. This is the main component of the marinade, but we're gonna add some oyster sauce to this. 
It's entirely up to you what oyster sauce you prefer. I personally am looking for only one in particular. Uh, it's got to be nice and thick. And we're going to break that down into this marinade because we want a little more of the savory kicking in. Because I already have salt, sweet, because that rice vinegar is wicked sweet. Now, Korean pepper flakes or powder. Entirely up to you. I go with the powder for the marinade itself. And it's up to you on how much you want to put in, guys. Uh, it can be very spicy depending upon how much you put in. It's entirely up to you, so use your own discretion. And we're going to mix that in until we can get this as dissolved as much as possible. That's called gochugaru. So now that the marinade has been kicked off to the side, I'm going to work on my prep here for the pork. I'm working with approximately a pound, give or take. There's a little bit of fat in this, which is perfect. The goal here is we're doing essentially a stir fry. So we want to keep these pieces small uh, on the thin side as best you can. You can also wrap this and freeze it for just maybe 30 minutes or so to get this a little firm so you can get some really nice thin cuts out of this. Personally, I don't care if it's on the chunky side. We're eating a noodle bowl. It's going to have the most sexiest pork ever. So let's get it all nice and hunky. So I'm just going back into my slices. We're doing them stir fry style. So we just want to keep this as close to the same size as possible. And once your cuts are done, put it in the bowl. We want to get this marinating. And as you can see here, it doesn't take long to take on color. And it's absolutely divine, guys. It's so delicious. I can't wait for you guys to look at this at the end. So now you have choices that you can make. Vegetables. If you consider all of the rice bowls, noodle bowls, soups, you know what you like for vegetables. For me, I am an absolute go-to for zucchini all the time. I love zucchini. And we're doing thin slices here. I also plan on doing this for carrots. Carrots are going to be cut the same way as well. Ultimately, you want to end up with about two cups worth, give or take. Depends on how many portions you want to make. Um, we only did, believe it or not, I know you're used to seeing me do bulk cooking. This was enough for two people. I did have extra pork left over. That was okay because it was perfect for sandwiches. But we want to do at least three vegetables. Here I am taking some scallions and doing some simple cuts on there because we're going to saute those. And I always want to have thinly sliced scallions for my garnish. Always got to do it. And with Asian dishes, if you do it on a bias, it looks beautiful. Very fast and easy to do. Just watch your fingers. And I also plan on adding corn. I had some leftover farm fresh corn that we flash froze from last season. I was so excited to be able to pull that off the cob. I was wicked happy. Oh my God. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit of corn into this. Beautiful colors. Um, you know me for the whole unique and colorful culinary experience. I want colors with my dishes and I think it's important for the variety as well. So I'm just getting all of my vegetables into their own little happy containers. Now you don't have to do separate guys. You most certainly can just mix everything in except for the finely chopped scallion. However, I'm approaching this the same way that they cook japchae, which is another Korean noodle dish. The rule of thumb is you cook each ingredient separately, but you don't cook it all the way. You uh, go ahead and you cook one, remove it, and go to the next vegetable that you gotta work on. And the nice part is there's very little oil that's used with this. In fact, it carries over beautifully. Now with zucchini, you're going to see some color changes. That green will turn vibrant. It only takes about 
two, maybe three minutes to cook this, guys. The carrots, as long as they're nice and thin, they're going to cook up perfectly for you. Another two to three minutes, give or take. And we're going to do the same thing with the chopped scallion. Let me tell you something. Pan-seared scallions have the sexiest flavor possible. I can't explain it. I just have to experience and live and love it. It's my favorite flavor. Now I did add a little bit more oil to this because I noticed the pan was starting to be a bit dry and that is okay. Now these suckers cook in about a minute so you definitely want to stay at that stove. Now into this pan we're going to finally start cooking up that pork. As you can see here, I'm trying to drain it into the bowl and then put the pork in the pan. We want a nice hot sear going. And automatically, you're going to see some of that marinade coming out of the meat. It just can't be avoided, so don't even worry about it. And besides, the nice part is the sauce is going to caramelize. It's going to give you that nice caramelly note to it. And it's like the best flavor ever. So with pork, you can cook it to order, guys. That is correct. You no longer have to cook it well done. In fact, it's probably been about a good 12, 13 years now. Uh, pork can be cooked to temperature as long as it reaches 145 degrees Fahrenheit and you let it sit for about two to three minutes is okay. Um, thankfully with this, I'm not going to really worry about thinly sliced because we're not doing chops. We're not doing a roast. But you can cook it to water. Just use your own discretion. It's up to you. So now I'm at that point. The pork had to come out. And now we're going to saute the noodles. I had some pot-cooked wheat noodles here that we're using. Now in Korea, they also have ramyun, which is their version of instant noodles. I chose the fresh noodles to be truthful with you because they were a great price at the Asian market. Oh my god. It's up to you. Honestly speaking, they were the same price for me, so it wasn't hurting my budget. So after only about a minute or two, we've added a little bit of sesame oil just to flavor the noodles. Uh, we don't want to keep this in the pan for long because the noodles are going to start browning fast. So it's important you're tossing this stuff around. So let's take a look at this, guys. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at all the bright colors, the notes of the greenery coming out. And the pork is so tender. And the flavors of a bulgogi sauce come through beautifully. And the fact that the garnishing alone just makes this so inviting. Who wouldn't want to do a face plant in this? So please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Give this recipe a go. And I am so glad you joined me, guys. Happy cooking.